وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another installment from the Ramadan Daily Droplets brought to you by al Madrasa al umariya in which we take a benefit connected to the month of Ramadan one every day and we explain it to you uh, in these videos that are being released. So today, inshallah ta'ala, we have the topic of Ramadan as an opportunity to purify yourself, to correct your soul. A time for islahu nafs wa tazkiyatu nafs Correcting your soul and purifying it And in Surah Al-Shams, Allah Azza wa Jal told us قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Successful is the one who purifies their soul And the one who has failed and lost is miserable Is the one who dasaha. Some of the scholars said the meaning of dasaha is that they habata biha and they fall down to the lowest levels because of this soul of theirs. They take it down to the lowest level. In fact, they might take it down to such a level that they become kal an'am, balhum adal. They become like cattle, or even more misguided than that. And it might take them down into the depths of Jahannam. So they, they dirty it, they, they make it impure after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded them to purify it. And zakaha here, it means to, to purify it and to cause it to develop with you, to develop it towards obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and away from disobedience. And Abi Hurairah, رضي الله عنه narrated from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول الله عز وجل الصوم لي وأنا أجزي به يدعو شهوته وأكله وشربه من أجلي والصوم جنة الحديث The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم tells us that Allah عز وجل said Fasting is for me and I reward it because the servant of mine, he leaves his desires and his food and his drink for my sake. And fasting is a shield. The hadith is in Bukhari and others. It's also uh, rated in Muslim and others. And Ibn al-Athir, rahimullah ta'ala, in his book, An-Nihaya, he said, مَعْنَ كَوْنِهِ جُنَّةِ يَقِي صَاحِبَهُ مَا يُؤْذِيهِ مِنَ الشَّهَوَاتِ He said, the meaning of fasting being a shield is that it protects the person who does it from those harmful desires. And ultimately that's a part of purifying the soul, to purify and protect the soul from the harmful desires. And that's the link to fasting now. So if someone asked, what is the link between fasting and tezkiyah to nafs, purifying the soul? The link is that fasting is a shield. It's a shield from the harmful desires that are a part of removing them, which is such a core part of purifying the soul. Al-Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said about fasting, huwa li jamu al-muttaqeen, wa junnatu al-muharibin, wa riyadatu al-abrari wal-muqarrabin, wa huwa li rabbi al-alamin, min bayni sa'iri al-a'mal, fa inna al-sa'ima la yaf'alu shay'a, وَإِنَّمَا يَتْرُكُ شَهْوَتَهُ وَطَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ مِنْ أَجْلِ مَعْبُودِهِ Ibn Qayyim in Az-Zad, he said, in Zad al-Ma'ad, he said, It is the bridle of the people of taqwa and the shield of those who fight and it is the exercise of the righteous and those who come near to Allah. It is for the Lord of the world's uniquely among all of the other actions. 
Because the fasting person doesn't actually do anything. Fasting is strange like that. It's not actually something you do. Rather, the fasting person is the one who leaves his desires and his food and his drink for the sake of the one that he worships. He leaves his desires, his food and his drink for the sake of the one he worships. فَهُوَ تَرْكُ مَحْبُوبَاتِ النَّفْسِ وَتَلَذُّذَاتِهَا It's about leaving what your soul loves and what it craves. إِثَارًا لِمَحَبَّةِ اللَّهِ وَمَرْضَاتِهِ in order to put the love of Allah and His pleasure ahead of your desires. وَهُوَ سِرٌ بَيْنَ الْعَبْدِ وَرَبِّهِ لَا يَطَّلِعُ عَلَيْهِ سِوَاهِ He said it's a secret between the servant and his Lord and nobody else sees it. So again, when you talk about tazkiyah to nafs purifying the, the soul and getting rid of what corrupts it, like Ibn al-Qayyim said, fasting is all about leaving the things that you love, leaving the things that you crave in order to put the love of Allah before everything else. And it's secret between you and between your Lord. Nobody sees it except Him. But here could come a question. How is it that nobody sees the fasting except Allah? Because many people know you're fasting. Your family can see that you're fasting when your friend offers you food or drink and you say, and I saw him, I'm fasting, they can know you're fasting. He said that a person or people could see from a person that they leave the things which break the fast in the open. وَتِلْكَ حَقِيقَةُ الصوم. He said, as for him leaving his food and his drink and his desires, for the sake of the one that he worships, for Allah's sake, that is a matter that no one, no human being can see. And it's the reality of fasting. The reality of fasting is leaving the food, the drink and the desires for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that is what nobody can see except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody can see it except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you left your food and you left your drink and you left your desires and you did that truly because you love Allah and you want to put the love of Allah before those desires that you had that were permissible desires from food and drink and the other things which break, which break the fast. This is a matter that nobody can see. And it's the reality of what fasting really is. And Ibn al-Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala, he continues and he said, وَلِلصَّوْمِ تَأْثِيرٌ عَجِيبٌ فِي حِفْظِ الْجَوَارِحِ الظَّاهِرَةِ وَالْقُوَى الْبَاطِنَةِ He said, fasting has the most wondrous effect in preserving the limbs on the outside and the, the person's internal strength and their internal power. And saving and correcting that, uh, that self from all of the things that could, and that would corrupt it. And here he's talking about even from a person's health, from the point of view of a person's, uh, from a person's health. He said later on, فَالصَّوْمُ يَحْفَظُ عَلَى الْقَلْبِ وَالْجَوَارِحِ صِحَّتَهَا He said fasting, it preserves for the heart and the limbs their righteousness. And it protects the limbs and keeps them healthy. And Ibn Qayyim talked about how it removes some of the harmful substances from the body and so on. And it also protects the heart from the things that would cause it to become sick. Fasting returns the, that health to the soul and to the heart, sit, taking away from what the, what the desires had claimed from a person. So Ibn al-Qayyim, he continues, Rahimahullah ta'ala, فَهُوَ مِنْ أَكْبَرِ الْعَوْنِ عَلَى التَّقْوَى That's why it's from the greatest of means to achieve taqwa. كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Or you believe fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those who came before you 
so that you may become a people of taqwa. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an, he said, قَالَ لَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَا مَعْشَرَ الشَّبَابِ مَنْ اسْتَطَاعَ مِنْكُمُ الْبَاءَةَ فَلْيَتَزَوَّجْ فَإِنَّهُ أَغَضُّ لِلْبَصَرِ وَأَحْصَنُ لِلْفَرْجِ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَعَلَيْهِ بِالصَّوْمِ فَإِنَّهُ لَهُ وِجَاءُ This hadith narrated by Al-Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an. He said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said to us, O group of young men, whoever among you is able to get married, let him do so. For this will be better in lowering his gaze and protecting his private parts. And whoever is not able to do that, then let him fast. For it will be a wija for him. And the wija is like the castration, that which cuts off all desires. Subhanallah, this is what fasting does. Fasting cuts off the desires. And here this hadith talks about the desires in relation to marriage, al baa in relation to marriage and, and, and matters of that nature. But as we've heard, fasting is a comprehensive means to purify the nafs and to bring it closer to a taqwa and to support it in the stage and the steps of tazkiyatun nafs, purifying the soul, whether that be through istighfar, whether that be through leaving the shahawat and providing the strength to the, to the heart to be able to distance itself from the shahawat, which are muharrama, which are forbidden by distancing itself from the shahawat that were originally permissible, the desires, the desire for food and for drink and so on. And a person leaves those things and the heart becomes strong and more able to leave its other desires. And based on that, a person can purify themselves and can remove the, de the desires which harm the heart and harm the soul and bring back health to the heart again. Just like is mentioned in this hadith. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَعَلَيْهِ بِالصَّوْمُ Whoever is not able to marry, then let that person fast. For it will be a cut off. Like a castration. Wija will completely cut off the desires of that person. This is the power of fasting in tazkiyatun nafs, in purifying the soul. That's what Allah made easy for us to mention and Allah knows best. وَالصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَى نَبِيْنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.